Oh boy, a new Nintendo Direct after almost a year? This is about new games releasing in the first half of 2021. Okay. Okay. No one thought it would get announced so soon. Not me. This is great. I'm losing my mind. No, we, we can schedule that for another time. Right now, it's time to begin the speculation. What are your hopes for Splatoon 3, and what do you think is possible now that you've seen the first trailer? I asked y'all over on the community tab and on Twitter this very question. Here are the responses. Let's tap in. Open world exploration, please. I emoji. More exploration other than the hub would be really nice. Open world single player campaign is my wild dream for this game. Free out of bounds exploration in open world. I wanna look for this lore, man. I can't agree more with these comments. We are on the same wavelength here. Open world exploration in Splatoon is something that I've thought about since the Octo Expansion DLC got released. I would love to see exploration on the level of Sonic Adventure or Super Mario Odyssey. I hope that this desert area shown here, now known as the Splatlands, is not just gonna be our tutorial area that takes us to Splatsville for the first time. I hope it's part of the campaign. I believe that the stage pool for the new game is going to be almost entirely new to focus on the new theme. I feel that if they bring any old maps back, they're going to be the ones that weren't brought to Splatoon 2. Maybe they would even have a new broken down look. Now that Splatoon 3 is officially revealed, Nintendo is hiring a level designer for the game. They're going to be tasked with renovating existing layouts, so I think older maps could return like you mentioned. I can't be the only one who misses Salt Spray Rig. This dystopian design will be fascinating. I just hope we get a less restricted camera mode so we can further appreciate the detail put into the game. New maps disregarding returning or remix stages from the other two games could likely be themed on post-apocalyptic or dystopian themed major cities, and destinations from around the world. The Eiffel Tower in the trailer supports this theory greatly. This would be super interesting to see because the Splatoon 2 art book, if I remember correctly, and I'll look for the source, mentions that there are several countries in the Splatoon world probably reformed after 12,000 plus years. There's also airlines in Splatoon for sure because in every game, there's always been this familiar plane flying over the residential areas or the plaza and square, and now also Splatsville or Bunkara Town in Japanese. But it just adds to that world building, you know? I'd personally love to see a really fleshed out single player mode. More varied missions would make it stand out more in my opinion. Octo expansion scratched the surface, but I feel like they could do so much more with the game mechanics. Maybe there could be missions where you have to infiltrate some heavily guarded base in order to steal something valuable. The possibilities are endless in my eyes. I definitely think the stakes are higher now that we're in this vast wilderland that is the Splatlands. Things are rougher and tougher out here, and we are not a part of the Squid Beak Splatoon. We don't get initiated into an agency as far as we know now. That could change in the future. This story mode might be way more survivalist, and we might even see the return of missions where we have to get to the goal without a weapon from the Octo Expansion DLC. One thing I'm curious about is will this be Agent 7, Agent 9, Agent 10? Who knows? I also wonder what personality you'll give her. Hopefully she gets all the love she deserves. I definitely feel that on the channel, new Splatoon 3 protagonist is going to have a more mature personality, but while the vibe is more mature, It'll still have a carefree air to it. Things are all peachy cane and Angopolis, but out here in the Splatlands, you gotta be fierce. Let's talk about the Agent 7 and 9 ideas. You have to remember that Agent 8 is only named so because Captain Cuttlefish did not want to go through the mouthful of saying test subject 10,008 over and over again, and Agent 8 felt like more of a cool code name. So Pearl and Marina, not Asians, they don't know anything about the Squid Beak Splatoon. There's no lore that states this. If we're going as far as to prove this, there's no official lore that says Agent 8 even knows about Agent 4 and 3's jobs. It's just a popular headcanon. 
petting your little buddy or bust. Honestly giving me the same energy as the can you pet the dog Twitter account. Here's hoping that wish comes true. I think it will be very adorable. It add that extra bit of interaction with the world around us. I don't know. I just want to punt little buddy off a cliff, but he comes back without a scratch. I mean this in the most loving way possible. Very different energy here. And I think I agree with this one a little bit more, if only because small fry are the bane of every salmon run player's existence. Morally speaking, I know that we're invading their home to steal their children and hurt their families. So it is understandable that they would attack us with those plastic spoons that go for the shin. And man, I don't think I can forget that anytime soon. This little guy's cute. It's, it's fine. I think the new protagonist is Agent 3 herself. I also think your playable Octo in Splatoon 3 is Agent 8. In the description, it says that they are battle-hardened Inklings and Octolings, further solidifying that they might be the ones from Splatoon 1 and 2. This is an interesting theory here. From the initial trailer, we see that we can start out as an Octoling or an Inkling, and I don't know how that'll affect story mode in particular, if there'll be a different path for each species. Only time will tell. Now for a different perspective, the Splat 3 protagonist is Agent 4 in the future, kind of deciding to go their own way with their little salmonid buddy. Change my mind. 4 was on the side of chaos in the Final Fest promotional art. It's not too far off. I kind of hope to see the new Inkling actually be Agent 4. If there's a different story mode, maybe she can meet up with the other agents along the way. Maybe they have their own special missions and you can finally unlock 3's hero cape. Also, I hope we can play with our little buddy. Scenic further adds to the theory that this Inkling could be Agent 4. For all we know, 4 grew out their tentacles and just hightail it to the Splatland for a fresh start. You know what I'm saying? Jodo Jedi says, if they don't bring back 4, they probably will since they are on the winning Final Fest team, I will cry onto my Switch until it literally breaks from the water. I have no doubt that they'll return, whether that's as the protagonist or a supporting character, but I am praying for your Switch and I'm only hoping the best. Of course, the real question is what personality fans will give this character that differs from 3, 4, and 8. Wherever the wind may take me, I'll do whatever. Kinda obsessed with protecting others, but still somehow carefree and hold on, am I just describing Sonic? They'll be more mature than 4, but I'll still laugh a lot and definitely get along with them. This dynamic will be quite fun, so to speak. The bow weapon is originally Octarian made. It just comes off as something a more militarized force would make. Also, this is a small question. Any tentative names for our new protagonist? Oh, -ho! I'm glad you asked. Wait, what? Definitely think the bow could be Octarian made. It has this traditional techie feel that the Octobrush has, and they kind of went for that same aesthetic with the new Dynamo that looks kind of like an ancient relic as well. As for the protagonist's name, or at least my version here on the channel since Agent 3, 4, and 8 all have names and I'll pop those on the screen. Her name will be Nozomi Mizuhara. The name Nozomi also means hope in Japanese. So there you have it. A future I'd like to see is Agents 3, 4, and 8 working with a Splat 3 protag in the story mode, whatever it may be. Imagine going in a stage and tackling it as a team of four. We've seen computer-operated characters like the Octolings in Octo Valley and the Agent 3 fights. This would definitely be an immediate upgrade and absolutely exciting future if this were to be added in a single-player campaign. However, this means that the Splatoon 3 protagonist would have to be initiated into the Splatoon in some way, or maybe not. Kat says they set a precedent with bringing 3 back for the Octo expansion. They can't just drop it now. I kind of want to see the trio all grown up and contrasted with the adolescent upstart. Yeah, a year and a half has passed. According to the Squid Research Lab and the post that popped up, I definitely love to see 3 return. Love during the Octo expansion. Plus, they can just have a showdown of uh, whose cape is the coolest. <laughs> Miku says, I'd love to see the agents here in the Splatlands, maybe for some sort of mission relating to the story mode of Splatoon 3. Amazing Donut replies to Miku's comment with, I imagine something like that, something that would allow you to move between the locations of the first two games and the new one, but playing them on missions sounds much better. I wonder if Captain Cuttlefish will return to Callie and Marie in Splatoon 3. 
Also, what about Pearl and Marina? Will Off the Hook still be around, or will the two pop stars be replaced like the Squid Sisters? I think he's definitely going to reunite with Callie and Marie. There was that bonus track from the Octo Expansion chat log after all, where Marie finally got in contact with them. So it'd be rude if he didn't head back to Cuttlefish Cabin just to check in on everyone. Him and Agent 3 have been gone for so long. Platoon 2's hero mode also features a sunken scroll in which Captain writes a telegram that explains why he and Agent 3 were unavailable at the time. On a research trip to the Cape with Agent 3. Maybe late, but left dinner in the fridge. Once again, it's only been a year and a half since the events of Splatoon 2. I'd say he's here to stay. On the other hand, Pearl and Marina are going to stick together no matter what. This was emphasized in both the Final Fest and Mario 35th Anniversary Splatfest results. So, Off the Hook isn't breaking up? What? Heck no! You and me are gonna rock the mic together until the end of time! But what if I wasn't a super DJ anymore? What if I lose my shine? Marina, get those negative thoughts out of your head. For real. If that happened, we'd work together to power you back up. We're a team. It'll be interesting if Pearl returns to her heavy metal roots that we saw back in the Octo expansion, but who knows? They could do a fusion of different genres and really experiment. We're definitely getting new announcers, but at least Off the Hook will be a supporting role, kind of like the Squid Sisters did in Splatoon 2. Mr. Meme says, I wonder if there will be a new villain for the single player campaign. Maybe DJ Octavia would even turn to the good side, or at least a temporary thing like with Bowser Jr. in Bowser's Fury. Octavio needs his redemption arc. He offered us the Ankopolis Memorial mixtape for Final Fest, is that his peace offering? I don't know. Will he reconcile with Captain? I don't know. But that would be a great plot point to see in game, even if it's relegated to a sunken scroll or whatever replaces the sunken scrolls. I'd love to see that happen. They say third time is a charm, but a third boss battle with him is not what I'm looking for at all. <laughs> I'm not trying to fight DJ Octavio again. I'm thinking that we enter the Splatlands into a turf war between the Inklings and Octolings versus another race. This game would have a new enemy because of the nature of the Splatlands. It would focus on us defending our land against the enemy. This is a brilliant idea. I don't think we've seen the last of Kamabuka. Kit says, I think that in Splatoon 3, the story or lore will definitely be tied to or have something about Salmonids in it. And perhaps maybe even the hero mode will have some sort of connection to it. My guess is that it might have something to do with Mr. Grizz. He's pretty fishy to me. Definitely agree. Mr. Grizz's identity must be uncovered in Splatoon 3 since we are left with a lot of unanswered questions in the current game. Beware the bear. If he is one, that is. Since salmon migrations only happen in 70 years, Mr. Grizz will start to lose business and profit due to the lack of salmonid and might kidnap little buddy for profit. That is, if he leaves or sends an employee out of Ankopolis to find some salmonids. And Grizz slash an employee find little buddy and takes them. And the story mode is to get little buddy back. A theory. You're onto something here. I hope to see more salmonid lore included in the single player campaign. And since Grizzco is a whole industry, I'm willing to bet that some associates, <laughs> let's just call them underlings, will be introduced. Poor little buddy though. Poor little buddy. The fact that banned specials like the Ink Zuka are making a return scares me. If they're making a return, a threat bigger than the Octarians could appear in Splatoon 3's campaign mode. Could be connected to Mr. Grizz. Maybe he's become overpowered with power eggs. Yo, let's talk about this. For real, it's one of the most exciting prospects of Splatoon 3. Citing one of the sunken scrolls in Splatoon 2, the old Splatoon 1 specials were banned due to them being overpowered. But maybe outside of city limits, there's different variables or it's just Inkopolis legislation only. And if Sheldon uses power eggs to modify our hero mode weapons, then who knows what Grizz is doing. He has his own line of weapons, which seem to be a well-kept secret. Just what is going to happen? Gemini says one of the wildest things that could happen would be a better contact between Inklings slash Octolings and Humanity. Carter mentioned passing on humanity's knowledge, and I see it weird that there was only one single AI in charge of that. True, true. If there are more inventions out there from Tartar's creator, perhaps we could be tasked to find them? 
In the same light, Maddoss says, this is kind of a theory. I really hope Commander Tartar comes back. We didn't see them die at the end of Octo Expansion. It's implied, but who knows? Maybe Tartar's AI was built into multiple telephones. Or maybe Tartar themselves becomes a sanitized Octoling to move more freely. Tartar is shown in the Final Fast artwork, so it's totally a possibility. The idea that sanitized Octolings are likened to zombies is kind of unsettling, but more on that in a moment. Sanitized Octolings and Octarians ended up following the herd to Splatsville, albeit a few. There's medicine that allows them to become more sentient and less like zombies. I really hope something like this could be possible. If so, we get a happy ending for Deadfish and potentially see her in a game, which would be cool. Shalura says, Marina will likely be tied in with sanitized Octolings somehow due to their matching ink color. Marina is pretty technologically inclined, but could you imagine if she was involved with some sort of lab facility? It would make sense to remodel an existing ranked mode or introduce a new one. And with the train feature, we'll probably be able to travel between two to three different areas. Maybe another city? I emoji. Rainmaker has already seen some modification from Splatoon 1 to 2, and the layouts of Splat Zones change on returning maps. So we could hope for these improvements and more. I'd love for different regions to become available, and that could even open up the possibility for seasonal events in addition to Splatfests. Jakey at Receding Tide says, I don't know why, but upon seeing the shot of the new plaza slash square area and the truck with the boxes next to it, my immediate thought was the replacement to Salmon Run is that you can work for a delivery service and deliver packages around the city. I love this idea, 100%. Secretly wondering if this is the entrance to a restaurant based on its exterior decorations. So I hope your idea comes to life. Part-time jobs aren't sketchy, woo! What you says? CPU battles. Even if CPUs can only get so intelligent, I think an offline alternative to Turf Wars would be nice for people who don't always have a way to connect to the internet. A small yet convenient feature. This would be a good way for people to train before they start the real thing. Sure, the single player mode helps new players to learn the game controls, but maybe for some, playing against other characters is a whole other experience to prepare for. <coughs> Inner agent. A chance to play as a little buddy. Imagine a whole adventure with a completely different playstyle than the main game, focusing on mundane tasks or even better, something like Harry the Platypus, where he goes and does his own thing undercover dealing with a huge threat. Imagine that. It'd be great to see. If the little buddy could help us solve smaller puzzles within the levels, or have their own levels, I'm thinking it would be similar to maybe Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker style of gameplay. Call me S says, I hope for something to replace Salmon Run. Pretty sure we won't be killing our little buddy's family, so maybe something new to do other than just Turf Wars slash comp? Also, please make the competitive scene not as broken, please, I beg. I'm super excited to see what could potentially replace Salmon Run. Those poor little guys. I would always think that the mode itself is so morally questionable, but still fun to play IRL. No Grisco propaganda for me though. I'm reminded of the short John Sandwich video where the Octoling wants to bring a small salmon at home now. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Also, you're right, the competitive scene deserves better. I never progressed far into it myself, so can't provide much commentary on that front. Zach says, I'd love if we could have a large pool of stages in each rotation, but all players vote on the stage like in Mario Kart 8. Then be allowed to switch weapons slash gear before the match starts. Daily challenges like Octo Expansion levels would be great to increase XP outside of battles too. This would be amazing and provide another alternative in private battles where only the host is allowed to choose stages slash modes. I don't see it working outside of playing with friends because the solo queue depends on the map rotation system being tied to announcements. The daily challenges part though, that could be neat. It could take place in various Splatland areas. A new Battle Royale mode? Battle Royale mode, I emoji. Because one, it's chaotic and totally fits the theme, and two, imagine how fun that would be. Since everything seems super chaotic and crazy, I hope there's a free-for-all mode in Turf or Rank. Everyone for themselves. No thoughts. Only chaos. Since Fall Guys is coming to the Switch, I can see Splatoon being able to handle some sort of feature similar to the aforementioned titles in minigames. Heck, this could even be our alternative to Illegal Salmon Run. That's right. It's banned now. I don't make the rules. Time will tell what's in development, though. Hair says, a boss raid mode. Team up with seven other cephalopods to take down the boss and win some prizes. 
The bosses are stronger from the story mode ones and send out more attacks. Getting splatted a certain amount of times will put you on a 30 second cooldown before you can fight again. This reminds me of the max raid battles in Pokemon Sword slash Shield, and I love how you formulate the specifics. It can get happening though. If not free for all, some sort of mode will have to replace your current PvE, which is Salmon Run. Or why not both? Who's to say multiple variants won't be introduced to keep the game going fresh? Splatoon 2 saw more updates in its lifetime, and I'd say we might even receive double the paid DLC. Levigink to Link says, My theory about the specials is that they're bringing back a select few from both Splatoon 1 and 2, along with a collection of new ones. Also, I think someone mentioned the cephalopods swapping weapons mid-match, i.e. like a primary and a secondary. Sheldon Picks Volume 4, let's go, baby! It would be cool to see the Splatoon 1 specials overhauled and redesigned. Ink Strike is one I definitely miss, and aerial splashdowns, while fun, just don't hit the same. I'm also excited for the new ones and how they'll be patched a week later after the game launches. Ultima says, I think choosing two main weapons and being able to swap between them between deaths will be a great dynamic, sort of like hero swapping in Overwatch. That would be amazing. Could you imagine going with a shooter at the start and then swapping out to a long range like a sniper rifle, zeroing in on the opposing team at key points? I can already imagine how it would work and yeah, love the idea. Muznet says, I'm really interested in the potential new power-ups. Like there's probably going to be a respawn range up, but if there is a power-up to maybe turn Squid Roll slash Squid Surge into weakened non-invincible versions of Kraken, that could be interesting. Big brain time. There are a couple of power-ups that most people never truly utilized as the years went by, like Ninja Squid or Thermal Ink. Respawn Punisher is probably never coming back, but I think some others could be consolidated. Perhaps a future slightly more complex than using ability chunks would come into play? Cameron Cooper says, Something I would like to see is a bit more flexibility with sub-weapons. Maybe weapons could have two or three possible sub-weapons you can switch in and out as opposed to just being stuck with one. It'd help with balancing or make already strong weapons too strong. I'm already happy that they seem to be experimenting with subs that aren't just projectiles with the crab turret thing. I'd personally like to see a camouflage sub slash special. Multiple sub weapons is an idea I definitely haven't seen before, and it would be interesting if that was implemented. Although it seems as if our characters might have limited ink capacity out here in the Splatlands, or perhaps ink tanks change with the weapon, similar to the updated Splattershot Jr. from Splatoon 2, and these specials will be a blast to see, for sure. I wonder what that crab will do. First of all, I hope the Tattered Hood will be released as a headgear item, and I hope you get to explore the desert on some kind of ink motorcycle. I also hope we get the hood as an item, and the return of all the previous Agent and Neo Octoling gear. Also, hearing the mention of a motorcycle makes me think of Breath of the Wild and the Master Cycle Zero. I don't know if we'll get a map that lets us free roam so that transportation could be a thing. I know that they're very iconic, but what if we don't have ink brushes? Imagine a world. Well, I believe in Octobrush supremacy. Techno TJ says, We need to be able to choose a specific color for our playable character's hair to have consistently outside of multiplayer matches. I know I'm not the only person who identifies as inkling slash octoling with a hair color in mind. Gustavo also says it would be nice if they included the option to change the ink color outside of battles and other modes. Fast forward slash skip the news and more options for private battles for those who want to mess around or to play more seriously. Setting a custom ink color without going into a match would be a pretty neat feature, especially when you need to take photos. Skipping the news announcements is a feature so many players want, hands down. Since there's a function to check map rotations in game, it's about time we should see that happen. Tom says, a way to combine two pieces of headgear so that you can look cooler, though you'd only have the abilities for one of them. Example, combining the five panel cap and golden toothpick together, but only having the cap's abilities. Oh, and also unlockable emotes slash taunts. Honestly, same. I've actually always wanted to equip the half room glasses with any beanie of choice. In Animal Crossing New Horizons, we finally have the option to wear multiple headgear accessories at once, so this same feature could be implemented in Splatoon. Also, emotes would be amazing. There's two open spaces on the D-pad for such purposes, if the devs want to use those. Also, you have reminded me! Let us dance! During Splatfest, 
please. We even have these animations that were used in the first game and sort of disappeared after that. Bring him back, Nintendo. Manody says, okay, but what if customizable weapons, I emoji? Like, how cool would it be if you could paint your weapons with custom color schemes and stickers? It would be nice to have some more personalization in the game besides your avatar, and I think that would be a really nice touch. I'd love to see this option. If we were able to personalize our gear the way we want, then we could choose color schemes that match our outfits, and the drip would be impeccable, so to speak. Apartments. Apartments? Like, they're right there in the trailer, just let me get one and decorate it. Maybe there could be a different currency for buying furniture and stuff than what you can get from Turf Wars, so your inkling has to work actual jobs, which could be mini games. I say the mini games because it would probably be too easy to earn cash from battling. Maybe not because you'd need the cash for clothes and weapons, so maybe using that as well for furniture and stuff would be good. As for features, I'm expecting some sort of apartment where you can decorate and rearrange stuff maybe. Perhaps you can invite your friends over and play some multiplayer squid beats or squid jump. If it's a go, apartments could serve as a stats hub, trophies, achievements, story progress, even friends lists, and through framed photos, highlights, instead of scrambling through menus, all your inventory and achievements are right there at your fingertips. Apartments, oh my oh my. This may have been hinted at since the Splatoon 1 days, and longtime fans will pop off if it becomes a reality, myself included. Still, I think it's possible in the third mainline game to give our Inklings and Octolings a place of their own, so they aren't only standing outside in the streets. Platoon is all about style, and interior design is arguably fresh. Fufu says, New music bands are definitely dropping, and this time around, Nintendo will likely explore some new genres we haven't seen yet, since the Splatlands culture differs from Inkopolis. Also, an offline battle mode with bots, hopefully. Yes! Bands like Ink Theory and the Bottom Feeders, who I think should return, brought a fresh new vibe to Splatoon with a fusion of sound I'd never heard before. I know the composers will continue to think outside the box with the upcoming soundtrack of Splatoon 3. What bands do you want to see return? I'd hope the chirpy chips still fit into this new aesthetic somehow. We need Deadfish back. That style of music is too good to keep in just Octo expansion. As amazing as it was, I'd love to hear some new tracks that play during more dark and serious parts of the game. I wonder if Deadfish's story is truly over, or where she is currently. Her passion for music was so strong that she still produced tracks even in her sanitized state, according to the official lore. It'd be dope if the story allowed for some unheard tunes to be salvaged, though. Sapphic Senpai says, Imagine Callie and Pearl are the idols for Splatsville, aka the City of Chaos, but in story mode we go to the City of Order to meet Marina and Marie. I don't know. While I'd love to see Callie and Pearl reign as the Queens of Chaos, I just can't see off the hook splitting up anytime soon. However, there is sort of a friendship forming between all the girls during the live concerts. With Splatsville called the City of Chaos, your idea about City of Order out there to match makes a ton of sense. We need some male idols, in my opinion. I wish we had a male idol that would be amazing. I want the new idols to be male octolings. Where's the we Make want? No, we need a male idols yeah, option. You want to give us pretty boys. I wouldn't mind I some male idols for once. I don't think it would fit the vibe of Splatsville, but a take on a boy band group would be interesting. Oh, okay. Y'all are adamant about this topic. It could be a great dynamic. Pearl did mention how she wanted to hear more Octarian music in the world too. Shh, I haven't forgotten about Dispair. Despite the interest, I still feel like male announcers or idols are something people really seem to want until we actually get them. Memes are inevitable. Perhaps we could get a K-music boy band? Listen, listen, the first hairstyle is already here. And that band, it could focus on upbeat metal music. Think the style of baby metal or just K-rock in general. Sure, give everyone some eye candy. Sapphic Senpai also says, if there are male idols in Splat 3, they're probably A, gonna be treated better than the idols we already have, B, gonna be shipped with female idols, C, if they're gay, we're gonna have to deal with those stereotypical gay male jokes. Not willing to make that sacrifice, sorry. If it did happen, there's unfortunate circumstances that shouldn't even exist. The Splatoon community, above most other Nintendo communities, is supportive of our LGBTQIA friends. There's a lot we have to deal with on social media, and folks are still being harassed daily for simply expressing themselves within the game. Only by bringing awareness to these issues will we be able to move forward. 
Megan Sutton says, I love more hairstyles, hair accessories for noxlings, maybe even makeup. Textured ink would be cool. Themed ink, mostly food themes, as it's pretty easy to think of. And speaking of Splat Fest, if we don't get another idol duo, one thing I would really love is the Squid Sisters and Off the Hook to become one big girl band. Callie, Marie, and Pearl as the three main singers, and obviously Marina as their DJ, because I don't really think it's necessary to have another idol duo just yet. Off the Hook doesn't seem to be showing any signs of separating or drifting apart and going solo. I don't really see the point of having a new duo yet, otherwise I think it'd be kind of lazy if they just use that same concept again. They also mentioned that they would like to see our characters have more interactions like high-fiving each other or fist bumping and more locations to hang out in and mini games. I hope that more hair slash tentacle styles, especially some of the scrapped concepts like this cool afro for Agent 8 are released as additional packs similar to Animal Crossing New Horizons. Let me have an email look if I want. Now for my personal favorite idea from your post, the idea of Off the Hook and the Squid Sisters combining as one girl group sounds like an amazing idea. The Final Fest version of Now or Never contains all of their vocals and Marina's godly high notes. Don't forget, she can sing. So imagine the power that these four would have. Even if that doesn't happen, I'd settle for a few more collab songs at least. We can only dream. Speaking of dreaming, Adrian says, I think it would be awesome if we got new faces to announce the stages. Off the hook for the story mode, Squid Sisters for some cameo, maybe taking care of a shop and a DLC where we get to work with all three duos, Marina, Pearl, and each one of the new announcers get a solo, Bomb Rush and Ty Goes Out style, and the final boss music has fragments of all solos and all duos' main songs. I know, I know, I'm an expert dreamer. I truly wonder what the story mode is going to look like in this game. More development for previous characters if they're involved while giving us a new region to explore sounds so exciting. The stakes are high, as I've said before. After seeing Marie sniping in action and off the hook help tackle the final boss of Octo Expansion, I just can't wait to find out what the others can do. Jayling says, I'm just wondering if off the hook will play a major role or be a part of Splatoon 3. Or will Splatoon 3 have new idols? Yume, will you create a voice and content for this new Splatoon 3 character? That would be super cool. The only hints as to where Off the Hook will end up lie in the Final Fest announcement and in Octo Expansion's chat logs. Pearl also mentions, We can't do Inkopolis news forever. So another question arises as to who will take over their position. We might not see that since we'll be in Splatsville, where we're sure to meet new idols or announcers. I'm beyond excited to create new voices for the characters we're bound to meet, and the new protagonist is sure to debut in future Splatoon 3 comics. Kanji Gotomo says, I think there will be new faces arriving and continuing with the Chaos theme. They should look like rock stars. Similar to how Callie and Marie were pop stars, and Pearl and Marina were taking a more hip-hop direction. So, seeing two fresh new faces would definitely be in order in this town of Chaos. If Order 1, I'd say things would look something more like EDM. I want to see them look like punk rockers. It's so cool to see music genres always influence the theme of the game. We're going back to our Splatoon 1 origins though. Hearing Splatak again was such a nostalgia blast. I think the punk rock aesthetic definitely fits the vibe of the Splatlands. So far, the possibilities are open for a ton of new features, new lore, and exciting moments. That's all for now. What did you think? Thank you so much for watching and contributing to the discussion. If you know someone who might enjoy this video, please share it with them. If you enjoy comic dubs and stories, please consider subscribing for more of that too. Until then, stay fresh.